Hello, year 10, how are you? Um, it's me, Mrs. Mitchell Brady again. I really hope you're all well and um, you are enjoying writing your speech. So I'm here to hopefully help you again. And you are now at the point, year 10, where your speech is written, it's done. You've handed in some of your paragraphs to your teacher um, to get some feedback and you are on the home stretch. We're nearly there. You're gonna be handing in your speech um, later this week, your full and final speech. And then as soon as we're back to school, you're going to be um, presenting your speech to your audience. So I'm going to talk you through today some effective presentation techniques in using prompts. So prompts mean things like PowerPoint, handout and cue cards. So how do you want your audience to feel? at the end of your speech. It's really crucial that you know this year 10 because the whole point is that your audience engage with you and have an emotional connection and you're going to use language to hopefully um, make them feel that. So think about that question and we will hopefully look through some different presentation techniques to help you. Okay, firstly year 10, I just thought it was really important I reference these keywords um, and they are keywords because they're important and therefore they're key. So we're going to look at our audience. So an audience is a group of listeners or spectators. Um, year 10, you have to present your speech to an audience. Um, so you can have questions asked and it's part of a kind of a live question and answer situation. As you should know at this point, your speaking and listening is a professional formal qualification that goes towards your language GCSE so you will need to um, write the speech perform the speech and take questions from an audience gesture okay a gesture is a movement usually of the body or limbs that expresses or emphasizes an idea sentiment or attitude and um, anyone in my class knows that I'm a big fan of gesture I move around a lot and um, my facial expressions my hands my arms things like that so during your speech and actually performing and presenting your speech to your audience, I would recommend that you use gesture. And finally, engagement, emotional involvement or commitment. Um, guys, your audience need to believe in you, agree with you, listen to you and engage with you. So effective language techniques and effective presentation techniques will help them do that. Before we go on year 10, please make sure you've got your speaking and listening booklet in front of you. That is the work we're going to be looking at today. Now your speech is written. Okay, where are we at year 10? Um, obviously I know you've all got different teachers, so you might have all been doing slightly different things at different times, but you are all doing the same thing. And you are now at a point where you should have written and completed your entire speech. Not your final draft, but you have possibly handed in some paragraphs to your teacher and had some feedback and had some opportunity to um, improve them. If not, you will be handing in your final speech on Friday. That is in red, it's in italics. On Friday, you are handing in your final speech. This speech will go to your teacher and then will be given back to you when we are back at school. And that is the speech that you will um, deliver and perform in front of your audience. Today is Wednesday and we're going to look at how you're going to perform your speech. Um, you attend the deadline is three o'clock. 3 p.m. on Friday the 22nd of May. If it's not handed in to your teacher by then, it will go down as a non-completion and you won't have the work done. Um, the speech will be performed by you when we are back at school. It is an official qualification and goes towards your English language GCSE. Screenshot this slide, take a photo, I don't mind, pause it. This information on this slide year 10 is really, really important. Please make sure you are aware of it all. Okay, are you ready? Are you set? Have everything you need. Before we look at using prompts and um, presentation techniques, you wanna make sure your speech is the best it can be. Can be. On the left-hand side, year 10, I've actually given you um, a breakdown of a checklist. I couldn't have been clearer, really. I've told you everything you need to be including. On the right-hand side is a short success criteria about how you should have structured your speech and everything that should be included. Feel free to pause the video, reread your speech that you should have here in front of you, and make sure you've got all of those things in it. Okay, using your booklet then, task five. Um, effective presentation techniques, do you know what they are? So we've got things like hand gestures, eye contact, facial expressions, uh, props, 
PowerPoint, pace and pause. I'm a really big fan of pace and pause. You want to make sure you are keeping your audience engaged, but pause at relevant points. So feel free to pause the video now, read through your booklet, and make sure you understand what each of those presentation techniques are. Okay, so in your booklet, you can see you've got a table and um, there are some links in your booklet. I've actually put them here for you, Year 10, as hyperlinks. Not in the video, because that doesn't work, but your PowerPoint will be on class charts, um, or you can get your teacher to email this PowerPoint that I've done um, to you. And I've actually hyperlinked these for you. So you're going to go to each of these speeches on YouTube, and I'd like you to watch them, please. You don't necessarily need to watch each speech, the whole speech, but look at how these people are presenting. Are they using hand gestures? Do they use props? Um, what about their facial expressions? Are they using pauses? And I want you to tick each one that they use. And then obviously if you're challenging yourself, which you should all be, think about the impact that these speeches are having and think about what techniques you want to use in your own speech. So this should be in your booklet. Please feel free to pause me, download the PowerPoint and get that task done. Good luck. Okay, so year 10, you have at this point had a look at effective presentation techniques. You should know what things like gesture, voice expression, pace and pause and things are. I've written the word distinction there and that is because you know from your booklet that your success criteria is pass, merit or distinction and we should all be aiming high. Look back at your completed speech. Think about how you want your performance to look. So what you don't want, and I assure you, you don't want this, is to stand still, speak really quietly, look down at your notes and just read off a page. Boring, not engaging, and also may mean that you're not getting uh, the pass grade that you need. So think about your key messages. Write down when you want to look at the audience and practice. Please don't feel silly because as I've put at the bottom here, guys, these are things you are marked on. So how you use pace and walk around and how you use gesture will all go towards your mark. So it's really important that now you've got your speech written, you do begin to practice. So we know how to perform it. Hopefully you've paused the video and you've had a go or had a little practice. So you've got your speech it's written, your introduction, your main body paragraphs, and your conclusion. You've had a look at some effective techniques. You know that you're gonna use pause for power. You know that you're gonna use pace in a specific way, perhaps when you're talking about certain things. You wanna use gestures and eye contact. Now, what could we use to help us? This little person here, plan, prepare, practice, perform. That's what you need to now be doing year 10. Some prompts you could use include things like a PowerPoint. So you can have a PowerPoint on behind you. You can use cue cards or you could print out handouts and hand them out one per person or two per person or per table that you think might help engage people in your speech. So let's have a look at some of these things you could include year 10. Okay, you can use a PowerPoint. So similar to what I'm using now and how we teach you at school, you could use one in your speech but there is no reason whatsoever for your powerpoint to be really long you want it to only have key images that support what you're talking about you can use quotes from others but no more than two short bullet points do not overcrowd your powerpoint the thing is year 10 if you put a powerpoint up you're going to rely on it too heavily if it's got too much information on and it might mean your audience are looking at that instead of listening to you so here's a little checklist of what you should use if you're going to use a PowerPoint. Okay, here we go. Here's a PowerPoint, okay? You could use this in your speech. Speech is about racism. I've got absolutely no idea why or how. There's nothing that tells me it's about that. It's a mess. It's an absolute mess. This up here is not relevant. You don't know, don't tell your audience who you are, they can see you. Clearly hasn't been proofread. This is just way too much text. It's really hard to see these two colours together. This isn't formatted, it looks a mess. No idea why there's flowers and this is just irrelevant. 
okay. Obviously, year 10, that was an extreme um, what not to do. And I hope you like my just don't do it down here. What was wrong with it, year 10? Well, it was a completely irrelevant background. It was far too distracting for the audience. Nothing whatsoever to do with inequality or racism. Uh, you don't need your name. We know who you are. You're going to stand up and talk. Uh, text colours are really difficult to read. Don't make your audience work hard for looking at something behind you when they should be engaged with you and feeling um, emotional towards what you're talking about. Uh, irrelevant picture, flowers, uh, crisps, absolutely nothing to do with the speech. So think about what you're showing your audience. That shape wasn't formatted, text can't be seen clearly, text can't be read, absolutely pointless way to use PowerPoint. It's clearly not proofread. I don't want to see any um, PowerPoints with spelling errors. And the text on the PowerPoint is your whole speech. Why would you want to share that with your audience when you want them to be listening to you and you want them to be captivated? So this is what not do if you're going to use a PowerPoint. OK, if you are going to use PowerPoint, then your temp should look something like this. Uh, just to be clear, waggle using a PowerPoint prompt is what I've written because it's a lesson. And down here is the wall and the yellow. You won't need this on. Imagine it's just in this square here. Has it always been this way? The income of 2.1 million African-American families, 26%, was below the poverty level in 2000. Source, sound vision. Issues in history, Martin Luther King. Relevant image, relevant image. As you can see, this is a much more successful way to use a PowerPoint. It will engage your audience. It will also be really helpful for you, Year 10, because it can prompt you so you know what you're going to be talking about. So if you were going to use your anecdote or your case study, um, this is exactly how a PowerPoint should look. Not exactly how, don't feel like you have to use this, but it should be clear to see. Okay, what was right with it then, Year 10? Well, it had a clear background. It wasn't distracting to your audience. It was just punchy. And actually, it hit quite hard once you saw what the images were. The information on it was relevant. It was an engaging title. It also used a language technique. The text colours were clear. There was no spag errors. It was a professional um, prompt being used in your professional speech. If you are going to be using facts, as you can see here, I've cited it. So you can see the source of where the information is from. Photos, uh, pictures are relevant and engaging. It's not cluttered and the text is not the whole speech. It's just your prompts. That is what it must be. So this is what you should be doing if you're using a PowerPoint. Obviously, you can download this PowerPoint that I've done from Class Charts and you can use this when creating your own prompts and cue cards. So don't panic um, too much about trying to take in that information. OK, what else could you use in your 10? You can use cue cards in your presentation. These are small pieces of card that are handheld. So they fit just into the size um, of one hand, not huge big pieces of paper. They're small. And cue cards can be used to prompt you. But here's your checklist. You must make sure they're written clearly. If I were you, um, those of you who I teach know that I am a stickler for organization. So I would recommend that you have your timings on them, you label them or you color code them. One side of a cue card, you are not turning over your cue card and they are prompts only. No way whatsoever should you be writing full sentences or full parts of your speech. Okay, um, it won't be helpful year 10 if they're all over the place. Big pieces of um, paper, paper that doesn't match, messy, scribbled, do not write your whole speech. This will mean that you just read it off the cue card and that is not what this qualification or this assessment is. So if you are going to use cue cards, and you absolutely can and I recommend you do, they are not to be used like this. This is what not to do. Okay, so what does a good cue card look like? Imagine that this blue section is the cue card, clearly labelled paragraph three, my personal anecdote. So I've actually given myself my prompt there. I know that I'm going to be talking about my paragraph three. I know it's going to include my own personal story. I've numbered my cue card and I've given myself a timing prompt. And I've also given myself a reminder that I want to pause 
to give the audience time to think. So you think back to earlier in the lesson when we were looking at effective presentation techniques. I then bullet pointed the remainder of my cue card. Imagine this. So this is one of my sentence starters to prompt me into what I'm talking about. I felt degraded and disgusted. So this is my personal anecdote. So this is just a prompt of what I can talk about. How would you feel? Okay, so I've actually given myself a little prompt there about what I want to talk about and how I'm going to use a rhetorical question and how I'm going to use an effective presentation technique. We need to learn how to speak to one another, dot, dot, dot. That is just a prompt, year 10. I haven't written out the whole of paragraph three, but it's really clear and really concise what I want to say, how I want to say it, when I'm going to say it, how long I'm going to take, and what I'm going to say. You can do this, year 10, all of you. Okay, plan your own then. Please pause me now and think about your own cue cards. You don't need actual cue cards. You could uh, maybe chop up some pieces of A4 paper, one piece of A4 into four different sizes. Think about your cue cards, labeling them and numbering them. Pause the video now, and here's a short success criteria and a checklist of what you should be including. You should have your speech in front of you so you know what should go on each cue card. Don't forget, look back to see a waggle. Okay, so year 10. If you watch anything in this video, I hope it's all of it and this section. It's really important that you are aware that this speaking and listening speech is an official qualification. You will be marked and graded. You will receive a pass, a merit, a distinction, or a not classified. This will contribute, so it goes towards your English language qualification. This is an exam requirement from AQA. This time you are not in school is an opportunity for you to work independently and write a phenomenal, fantastic speech about an area of inequality that you are interested in and that you care about. You are now writing your speech, which will be marked and handed in to your teacher, and you will then perform your speech. So your speech that you have written, you will be delivering to your class. But I do need to stress, it is an important piece of work that you should all have been working on. You have had um, numerous videos and lessons and things to help you. Obviously, if anyone has any questions, you can email me or you can email your teacher if you have specific things that you need to still know. But it goes towards your English language GCSE. You are writing it first, then you will learn it. You will practice, 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 and you will deliver it in front of an audience. Okay, what now then, Year 10? You have had a look at effective uh, presentation techniques. You know when to pause, facial expressions and things like that. You know what prompts you're going to use. So you have probably decided on cue cards. You might have decided to use PowerPoints. You can see here in my lesson how to use those things effectively. We've got deadlines, Year 10. You are handing in your completed speech to your teacher on Friday the 22nd of May and that deadline is 3 p.m. As I said at the beginning of this lesson, it's absolutely crucial that you um, do hit that deadline. Any questions or queries or worries or concerns, we are absolutely here for you. So please feel free to email us with any problems. Um, cue card, I would definitely recommend you get practicing and get writing now and start to practice your speech so you're really confident about what you are saying how you're saying it and why you are saying it. So today is Wednesday, you'll be handing in your speech on Friday the 22nd of May. Any questions, please feel free to email me. Anything else you might need, um, drop your teacher a line, we'd love to hear from you, we're missing you all terribly, and good luck with preparing to deliver your speech. Uh, speak to you soon, year 10, bye-bye. <laughs>